I will hand over to Marie Long, who is um, the Circle, platform Circle Point from SDC and Circle Point of the Agriculture and Food Security Network. And she's going to be giving us a briefing on the recent state to face meeting that took place end of April, beginning of May. And if you haven't seen so already, there was a great blog um, which sort of accompanied step by step the whole meet, the whole um, um, state to face meeting. Uh, I'm sure Marilo will tell you about that more now. So over to you, Marilo. Good afternoon or good morning to everyone. Uh, it's really a pleasure to uh, have some discussion with you and a short briefing on the face-to-face -face meeting we had just one month ago. Uh, I'm going to have a few points. I'm moving to slide two. This is the overview of my presentation. I'm going to have a short introduction on the network, on SDC network on agriculture and food security. Then I will have a few words on the face-to-face -face of this year. And then I will focus on some of the topics that I guess uh, could be of interest of the platform and its members. It's about outcome reporting at country level. It's the dimension and the use of the voluntary guidelines on land tenure. What does it mean for uh, projects and, and partner countries? Another point on the private sector involvement in agriculture and food security. And finally, uh, concrete uh, synergies with the Global Donor Platform work plan of this year. So moving to the next slide, this is slide number three. Uh, this slide is about the network as such. In 2008, SDC went through a ma major reorganization. One of the issues was to uh, dissolve thematic units that were separated at that time and to have uh, thematic persons and experts being better distributed in the different units, in geographical division, in the field, etc and to keep all these people together, uh, network, thematic networks were created. Uh, one of these networks uh, used to be called Agriculture and Rural Development. We just changed the name now towards Agriculture and Food Security. We have, for the time being, 200 members, uh, people uh, being the SDC staff, but also partners, organizations, especially NGOs, but also academic institutions. The mandate of our network, uh, you can uh, read there, it's about pledge sharing, basically, uh, good practices and so on. It's about a thematic support uh, and expertise from the network members uh, to other units in-house, in but also with peer-to-peer -peer exchange. And the third objective is about linking field-based experiences with global policy levels. In that sense, our network is hosted by the Global Program for Security. Uh, how these uh, 200 people uh, interact, uh, basically it's uh, on virtual exchanges, and every two years we have a face-to-face -face meeting. This meeting I'm mentioning now uh, in Switzerland was the second one. Uh, in 2010, we met in Cochabamba in Bolivia. It's, of course, a big challenge to maintain the, mo the momentum after the meeting or between the meeting. And um, people were proposing uh, some option about a working group or a regional meeting instead of uh, waiting for another global face-to-face. -face. Moving to the next slide, slide number four. Um, this year, face-to-face -face, uh, was quite an intense one. We had uh, five uh, topics topics discussed during the week. The focus was on the first two days on research reporting, and there we invited um, SDC staff partners, but also IFAD as a global partner. Um, on the following day on land governance, we had someone from FAO, and also during the whole week, Swiss partners, as I mentioned before, uh, being members of, of, the, of the network. On the last day, we had a joint session with another LTC network on employment and income, and uh, I will come back to that point later. Moving to slide number five, I just wanted to show you some innovation we had for this face-to-face -face, uh, this year. It was about visual facilitation, and there we got directly inspired um, with the platform at New Assembly in Bay. So we look for a cartoonist in Switzerland. You can uh, look at him at the, at the picture. He was attending the five uh, days of the meeting. 
and interacting with the people, uh, having uh, visual facilitation from the discussion, but also um, uh, some work on demand. Participants could go to him and ask him to make uh, some uh, drawing or portrait. And we use also the, the drawing uh, within the blog. That should appear, sorry. Here's it. So uh, in the blog, we try to have a social reporting exercise. We had two persons in charge of the blog, but also uh, we invited all the participants to contribute, to put pictures, to put drawings. And we wanted to have the external community, that means the people who could not attend, to also react. This last point did not function as well as we wished, but I think it was a, a first attempt. And as I mentioned uh, just before, we can talk about the questions. And it was also a good opportunity to, to get uh, and to keep actually a red thread during the whole uh, seminar about family farming. And we had asked our participants to prepare a small story about what does it mean to be a farmer. Uh, in South Africa, in Burkina Faso, in Laos, etc. And we had uh, this uh, storytelling at every um, half day, uh, beginning of the session. Moving to the next slide, uh, we enter now in a more specific uh, topic. It was about outcome reporting at country level. In 2008, when ACC uh, restructured the institution, it was also the time to have a, a better focus on uh, management for development results, and especially at country level and in-country strategy. This year, we will have uh, 12 new country strategy within SCC, and 80% of them have uh, agriculture and food security as a priority domain. So for our network, it was really a good opportunity to exchange on that. And we had a really good uh, peer exchange with the different participants presenting their research framework at, at country level. And it was also the opportunity to invite IFAS with um, Fabrizio Feloni, who is a senior advisor at the evaluation office of IFAS. He came with uh, also a presentation on the cost of and uh, the challenges IFAS is facing also in this level of reporting. One of the first uh, challenge we uh, uh, we faced and we we saw as a as a, a first uh, obstacle, I could say, was the difficulty to understand the result chain hypothesis when reading just the research framework. So uh, it's illustrated with the picture at the bottom of the slide. Uh, normally, um, most of the strategy aims at reducing uh, poverty, improving food security. Food security, but all the different steps of the of the results are not always uh, explicit, and this is really a need uh, for the coming strategy to have it a bit uh, clearly stated. Another issue was to have a, a good alignment with SDC outcomes at country level, and of course the country outcome in the same um, domain, for instance. And this is uh, where also it's important to to have the bigger picture and to see what other donor agencies are doing in that uh, level. Another issue, uh, that's the third bullet point, it was about the dimension and the level of the country program. A country program is more than the sum of projects. It seems quite obvious, but actually it's quite a change of, of, uh, men, um, um, of mentality, I could say, but also uh, how to involve also non-project activities like policy, dialogue, knowledge management, or partnership. And we had a, a very good exchange with IFPAT on that issue. Sorry. The last point was about key indicators or preset indicators. For the time being and for SDC uh, programs, it is quite open and free. That means that most of the team uh, on, the, on the country offices, they are proposing uh, indicators and outcomes. There is no uh, strong uh, instruction from the headquarters, but the discussion showed that uh, some minimal um, indicators are required, and we had a lot of discussion about the typical um, adoption rate of, uh, of uh, methodology or technology, uh, 
uh, increase of uh, productivity, yield, increase of income for family farming, what does it mean? And the difficulty actually to find the right indicators to be followed during a few years and to have it at the country level. The last point was about how to use existing data, especially everything with, uh, at national level, in national systems, and how to uh, be able to com complement that with quality, uh, qualitative and transversal studies. And uh, we had some good uh, inputs and experiences of having special studies, for instance, on food gap uh, and food gap survey that could be complementary to national statistics. I'm moving now to the next slide and the next topic. We had the full day on land governance. And the uh, uh, first objective of this day was about raising awareness among SDC staff, but also Swiss NGOs, on the voluntary guidelines on land tenure. I have to read the full title on the voluntary guidelines on the responsible governance of tenure of land, fisheries, and forests in the context of national food security. Um, people normally uh, had heard about the process and the negotiation in Rome, but uh, not many people could really um, have the insight of the content of, of, uh, of the guidelines. So we had the opportunity to invite uh, Mrs. Babette Barman from uh, FAO, who made a presentation, and was also able to react on SVT experiences and projects and to uh, relate the issue we are facing in different contexts and countries with the content of the voluntary guidelines. What participants were bringing in the discussion was, um, was this issue about the common, common property and pastoralism context, the dimension and the difficulties of large-scale investment, in particular in Mozambique and in Laos. We had two colleagues from this country uh, present during the meeting. And also the decentralized land administration, for instance, in Burundi, where SEC has quite a long experience now. We had then a working group, and I could say that the main conclusion was uh, recognizing that the voluntary guidelines are uh, a clear specific um, even if it's non not, uh, even if it's uh, voluntary, non-binding, etc. But uh, people really feel that it's a good opportunity, it's a tool to have um, uh, policy dialogue with government. Uh, to be used by NGOs in their lobby activity. And of course, the expectations are very high about what's coming next. That's about the follow-up uh, now on the, on the, on the guidelines, especially the implementation guides that are put in, in, the, in the months to come. I'm moving to the next slide and another topic that was the last day of the meeting, and it was um, a bit a specific uh, setup since we were uh, having two networks uh, together. We call it bringing two communities together. Maybe it could um, look strange for you, but uh, at least in our institution, we have quite separate um, things in the sense that we have a, a network. You can see it on the left hand side on uh, more agriculture, food security, rural development, more the green sector, if I can say so. And on the other side, we have a network called uh, employment and income. These different networks have also different uh, priority topics. For our network, we have a strong focus on rural advisory services and especially pluralistic RAS. In the uh, employment and income network, they are working on private sector development, vocational skills development, and microfinance as the main pillars. And they are very much active in the making market work for the core approach that they have been uh, developing together with the Springfield Center. So it was a really an interesting uh, option and, and, and possibility to bring this different approach and system together and to see how you can use the N4P approach uh, in while uh, having a, a broad system in the country and supporting advisory services uh, with different uh, actors. And we had also uh, as overlapping or common uh, topic, I would say, the micro-insurance or agricultural micro-insurance, where from our 
side, we, we saw it like a, an option and a solution for a climate resilient small scale agriculture. And for our colleagues, it's more from the micro insurance scheme uh, interest. Actually, the whole day uh, was really a success. People normally in, in the evaluation of the workshop, that's probably the day that, that got the, the best uh, ranking. And what was quite interesting that uh, it was to a bit to make it more clear what does it mean, uh, what is the role of the private sector. And of course, it's different kind of private sector. Uh, it's uh, sometimes the local private sector as the local service providers in, in advisory services. It's also local uh, micro insurance uh, company, but at the same time, it's also the multinational uh, insurance company that are now very much active, having public-private partnership uh, with different donors, agencies, and with the city, we have also some new experiences in that in that domain. So this was um, a bit the, the the different days of the of the workshop. Now my last slide, number nine, is about uh, possible synergies with the with the platform. I would uh, start with the results reporting at country level. Um, I knew about the program of the face-to-face -face when I came to Berlin a few months ago, so I was asking uh, a bit around other colleagues, how do they deal with, with the result reporting uh, in their agency, how do they deal with key indicators, with uh, the alignment with the national system and so on. I contacted uh, different people. I did not manage actually to have really an input of some of the of the members of the platform, except from IFAD, but we had the contact with IFAD for, for before. And uh, I think it could be really a, an interesting challenge to share more about uh, the different uh, agencies' experiences. One of the objectives of the, of the work plan on uh, aid, uh, development, effectiveness, and results. I just uh, looked at the, at the protocol we received about the shared knowledge and increased coordination on result reporting, result management, and metric monitoring. So from SDC side, we're very much interested to, to get some uh, information and ideas for other agencies since we are this year having many new country strategies. The second point that could be of interest is the dimension of the private sector involvement. Uh, of course, uh, the platform has already the, the TKP uh, studies, and we had some discussion also in Berlin, I guess, with uh, Germany and Netherlands. It's really uh, a, a, a topic that uh, is gaining a lot of uh, visibility. There is quite a lot of pressure also at the, at the national level in Switzerland. So I guess that's something we will continue to, to discuss and, and uh, look at it uh, carefully. And then something I have not mentioned um, in detail, but during the, the, the workshop, the idea was to discuss with the people how do we continue once we had the face-to-face -face finish. And uh, a few groups were constituted and decided um, to work on their own, if I can say it like that. One is about post-harvest losses, and the other one is on pastoralism. On post-harvest losses, SDC um, had a long experience in Central America. It was about the metal silo, and uh, in the last two, three years, uh, some of these uh, technology and experience were also um, worked out uh, in Southern Africa. And this topic is really increasing now in our institution. We will have different projects in Tanzania, in the, in the region of Southern Africa, and, and also from the Global Program Food Security. A call was uh, launched a few weeks ago, and the results will be known in, in a few days or a few weeks as well. So there it will be really a good opportunity having this group from SDC to liaise with a, a bigger group uh, from, the, from the platform members. On pastoralism, um, we are having a new strategy in the Horn of Africa, and one of the pillars of this strategy will be on rural development, uh, arid land management, and pastoralism. Uh, tomorrow is starting a, a meeting in Nairobi uh, on that uh, topic. And actually, what we would like really to capitalize is the long-standing experience we had in West Africa, working with 
pastoralist groups, but also at the normative uh, level with policy dimension at country and at the regional level with the ECOWAS and also within the Sahel and West Africa club. A last point, but with a question mark, it's about land governance. I know that in the past, as you see, uh, was quite active within the platform to push uh, a bit the land issues. And I think it's a, it is quite a, a good opportunity now to give some follow-up of the voluntary guidelines implementation. And if I well remember, in Berlin, there were not so many uh, people and not so many posts on the tree we had uh, somewhere in the drawing, meaning that maybe the, the interest was a bit uh, lower, but I think it's a topic that will continue in the, in the years to come and could be also uh, a good opportunity for the platform. With that, I finish the presentation. The last slide is not working <laughs> because you should normally see there the link to the blog and uh, please have a look at the blog and uh, any comments or, or questions are welcome. Thank you very much for your attention. Ah, here it is. Thank you so much, Marilla, for giving us this extremely concise presentation of what the F2F meeting was all about. And I'm sure it's given everyone um, some ideas of what to think about the role of the voluntary guidelines, the synergies with the platform, amongst other things. Um, I'd like to now open the floor to discussion. So if you have any questions or comments um, and you're joining via online, please use the little um, hand icon to raise and lower your hand if you'd like to say something. Um, our dial-in callers, we have quite a few calling in, and I don't know who all of them are. So I will please ask everyone to just say their name and what organization they're calling from um, when they make their point. Um, and you can use the little icon in the top right hand corner of the video screen to see everyone who's joining via webcam if you're joining via webcam yourself. So with that note, I'd like to open the floor to discussion. So maybe start with our um, telephone callers because I know they can't raise their hand. This is Sylvie Trochon from IFAD. I, I don't know what I have to talk to anything. I have no webcam. I can't raise my hand. But I have a question. Is Switzerland uh, reflecting on that? On that? Uh, are they, is anybody exploring uh, how to uh, define criteria and to uh, have the strategy approved uh, by the government? I mean, what, what, what are the actions uh, being taken? Yeah, within SDC, we have a, a new person recruited a few uh, months ago who is uh, clearly working uh, on this mandate uh, together okay. with the direction to precise the different criteria and to have a clearer picture with, uh, on how we are interacting with the private sector. Does that answer your question? Are there any yes. more comments? Uh, Marino, thanks very much for that presentation. As I said earlier, the blog that you have was very good on the face-to-face. -face. Just, again, touching on the issue of private sector and the issues of land governments, and you've, you highlighted the, the work of uh, the, the voluntary guidelines. Um, I was in Washington for the World Bank Land Poverty, where Bernd Shanson Bakker, if I pronounced it correctly, from EBG Capital, uh, who in the past uh, has joined platform discussions on, on land and in particular the principles for responsible agricultural investment uh, made some very good uh, uh, presentations and comments during that meeting uh, on the role of the private sector um, and the issues of, of, of land governance and perhaps we can think how we might follow that up uh, later in the year. As you might be aware, Christina Blank who is working in the SDC office here in Rome, is chair of the, the CFS consultation on the Rye Principles, which is due to begin on July the 2nd with a discussion on terms of reference. And at the same time, we have a very supportive statement coming out of the G8 Camp David meetings uh, last uh, 10 days ago, uh, not only supporting the, the, the voluntary guidelines, but also supporting the 
the, the uh, implementation of the piloting work on the RAI principles and the consultation. And IFAD, together with the World Bank and FAO and UNCTAD, are working on the, the, uh, the piloting of the RAI principles. Um, so I think there's probably scope for, for us to be connecting a little bit more on, on, and if you like, reinvigorating that, as you mentioned yourself, that previous SDC interest in land governance. And in expanding it into the importance of investment in the agricultural sector, uh, both domestic investment and 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 uh, foreign investment, and 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 therefore, yeah, the the role of the private sector. So uh, perhaps we can we can think a little bit how we might want to take that forward. And you know, with with I said in the past, SDC has brought in burnt, which was really really excellent. And we might try and see if we can uh, reestablish that that uh, that piece of work. Thank you. Thank you for the comment, Brian. Um, yeah, I think for, for us this year, is uh, land governance would be really uh, an important uh, topic and a priority. As you mentioned, uh, the colleagues in the mission in Rome will, uh, will take this role on, on Friday. Uh, it was interesting during the face-to-face, -face, we have the whole picture of what we're doing in countries. We had quite a lot of experience in different countries. Um, at the same time, we have a bit of three entry points, or we work really with the, the public sector at uh, national or at international level. Then we have a pillar uh, clearly with NGOs, um, typically the support of, of different national NGOs, but also international land coalition at the global level. And we have a, a third pillar on, on how to work with the private sector and how to uh, involve the private sector in all these discussion on investment uh, in land. And that's where we had some, uh, it's starting actually this, this third pillar, uh, but, also, but also now it's taking more importance and yeah, it would be very good if we can uh, keep these, uh, these dynamics happening uh, at international level also within the, the platform and with other members. Thanks, Marino. Are there any more um, participants joining via telephone? Who'd like to comment? Monica, I'll hand over straight to you then. Uh, yeah, hi, Marilo. I, I, I would also think that that would be great if you could reinvigorate the, the land discussion, bring it also back into the platform where, of course, many of our focal points are also members of the EU Working Group on Land and it could be expanded to to those uh, uh, platform members who are not members of the EU Working Group, which worked very well before, as Brian said, with uh, the Swiss. So that would be great. I'm also really happy that post-harvest losses and pastoralism livestock is is also an act, uh, active areas with you because they, of course, also working themes this year uh, for the platform. I, I have two or three small questions. I was really interested uh, that you changed the name from ARD to agriculture and food security. Could you just give us a little idea why that happened? Um, and then I wanted to um, ask about, of course, uh, was the view of organizing our next AGA, the, the experience with the storytelling and, and the face-to-face. -face. And lastly, uh, the, two, the 12 new country strategies you mentioned, will they be available for um, external view. Thanks. Thank you, Monica, for the question. Uh, I, I was expecting the first one, actually, <laughs> <laughs> because I remember once in, in Berlin, somebody said that uh, most of our program are on food security and the platform is still about rural development. And uh, I guess it was uh, Stefan from DFZ that was very a strong supporter of, of the rural development dimension. For us, it was a, a bit of a decision because I mentioned, I'm not sure I did, I did it, but I mentioned that we have 11 networks within SEC. And in these 11 networks, we had water, climate change, disaster risk reduction, uh, and we had uh, employment and income and rural development. And we had the impression that rural development was everything. I mean, all these other networks, they could also be called rural development. So. 
one of the first uh, idea was to make it a bit uh, more clear or a, a better profile for, for, the, for the network on agriculture and food security and uh, show the interaction with other networks in what we could call rural development could be like the umbrella of, of uh, I don't know, maybe five or six of these existing networks. And then because we were, we have this specific objective to link global policy with, with uh, field experiences and since we have a global program called food security, it makes more sense and coherent. It's, it's uh, easier to understand that the network agriculture and food security is in the global program food security. So that's more an internal uh, discussion. And for us, we had uh, quite uh, uh, an analysis uh, are we losing something that we, we change the name and we say no, but we have something additional coming in and it's nutrition. Because when you talk about rural development, the nutrition dimension is not, at least, not so clear. But if you really have food security in the title, you should have something a bit more clear on nutrition. That's really a challenge since we don't have a lot for the time being in our health um, network and, and programs. They are not very much nutrition oriented. It's more from the humanitarian aid uh, side. Um, so for the second question on the storytelling, I think it was very, um, it was very useful because you could spend five days between specialists or between the political or technical roles, and we just a bit lose the, the objective uh, for whom we're working, what that's uh, really the objective of, of it. So um, having every four hours some, somebody coming with a very uh, concrete story, normally the people, they should have come with an object in their hand and, 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 and told the story like that. It did not function very well. We had someone from uh, Zimbabwe who came with some seeds, um, but the other people, well, they use more picture or, or just put some drawing. We had a very uh, strong statement from our colleague from India who related about the suicide of, of farmers in India and so on. And I think it was really, it was really necessary, I would say, to, to have the storytelling uh, mix with other methodology. So I would recommend it uh, for <laughs> India as well. <laughs> you just need to have the people coming from the country because that was really the idea, to have uh, our national program of India, to give them also some space and to, to, to talk from something more personal maybe, but uh, I think it was, it was very important. Now the new strategy, uh, they are really at the, they are now starting quite a long process, they should have a first approval at the this year actually, but the finalized result framework um, will, uh, will be available and will be, we, we will be able to share it, but probably, um, probably not this year, but the beginning of 2013. And that's, a, that's also a question for me, I was asking CEDA, Canada and, and Sweden um, whether that kind of, of, uh, of documents are available. Uh, I knew from, uh, from uh, IFAD that the costs are available somewhere, you can, you can have them, and that's really a good start to have a, a knowledge sharing between the members, having really, for instance, in, in countries where many of us are present, to have an idea of, um, of what kind of outcome and indicators the agencies are um, having. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thanks, Monica. Thanks, Marilo, for answering all these questions. Is there anyone else? I believe we knew we have participants from the World Bank, the USAID, from, even from the high level task force for global food security. No pressure, but <laughs> if there's any, um, any other comments before we wrap up. All right, I think it's been um, our lost period of time now, and um, I think... Can I come in, Selena? Yes, of course. Hi, Alison. Welcome. Yeah, how are you? Uh, did, 
uh, thanks, uh, Marilo. My question is uh, related to the livestock uh, aspect of your networking. Uh, you remember that we we liaised with you recently. We contacted you recently about uh, the operationalization of the sub working group on livestock and pastoralism, and uh, you mentioned uh, some activities that you were. Uh, still finalizing. Uh, I mean, you were preparing for uh, for those activities to be uh, launched. I think in the Horn of Africa, maybe the Sahel and Mongolia. I would like to uh, uh, know further how far you've gone, and uh, <clears throat> what is the likelihood of you uh, uh, playing the active role that we expect you to play in the sub working group, especially. Uh, with uh, what you just explained. Thank you. Okay, thanks uh, this time for the question. <laughs> Actually, yeah, it was it was a bit of problem of, of time. Of course, we were very busy with the. Uh, um, we did we do not discuss about livestock as such. It's quite a, an issue within the house because we wanted to make the link with land governance issues and pastoralism. And work more on the on the dimension uh, of uh, common property, land rights, etc. Cetera, et cetera. And actually, um, where we could, uh, where we have experience to share, it's more what we've been doing in the past, uh, as you mentioned in in Sahel, West Africa, and in Mongolia. Um, and to at the internal uh, dimension, we want to bring this experience towards the new strategy Horn of Africa. This strategy is not yet. Ready. It's this year that it will be uh, drafted, um, and we have a small group that has been constituted, and they are meeting, as I mentioned, they are meeting uh, this week uh, in Nairobi. And I hope that this small group uh, will really take some concrete steps, and from there we will be able to participate in, in the platform. At the time being, it, it was a bit. So it's just too early. We we have the topic as a as an interest and a priority. Uh, we don't have yet a lot of products. Uh, for instance, with all the experience in West Africa, we don't have uh, a lot of, of capitalization. For instance, of support of uh, pastoralist groups or policy level, etc. So we we maintain the interest to be part of the of the working group of the platform. And uh, something I should discuss with you is uh, what kind of inputs you're expecting. And uh, for some of the inputs, especially from the Horn of Africa, it's too early yet. But I can imagine that at the end of this year, we will have already uh, some more uh, clear inputs. Thank you. Thanks, Edison. And I think on that note, we'll wrap up. And we had a wide variety of participants today um, joining sort of last minute or as the discussion was going along. I hope everyone um, enjoyed it as much as I did over here um, in London. And um, if you haven't, or if you colleagues have, if you haven't seen the whole presentation, it will be up on donorplatform.org in a couple of days, um, together with this, the recording of this virtual briefing. So please do feel free to go up onto the website um, and check it out there. And um, there will also be a transcript of Mary Lowe's presentation. Um, just seeing if I'm forgetting anything else. No, and the other thing I wanted to say is that um, Mary Lowe's email will be available to everyone. I will um, send that round to you soon. If you have any other questions for her or if there were some points you felt weren't really developed further, um, please don't hesitate to contact her or myself if you need any, any further information on any of this. Um, on that note, I'd like to say thank you very much, and I hope you all have a sunny week wherever you are, um, and hope to see you again soon at the next virtual briefing. <laughs>